I sued the airline company for losing my luggage. I lost my case. Today, I'm going to recap a 2023 action fantasy film called Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. In a frozen and desolate land, an orc felon is transported to an enormous, heavily guarded prison by way of a horse-drawn carriage. Upon arrival, he becomes acquainted with his fellow inmates, Edgin the Bard and Holga the Barbarian. Though Edgin greets him warmly and advises him to act properly, the orc makes an unsolicited advance on Holga, who retaliates by shattering his knees and crushing his face. The next day, Edgin and Holga are summoned before the Absolution Council to plead for their release. Edgin starts the appeal by narrating his past, providing a reason for their present circumstance. Years earlier, he had belonged to the Harper's Faction, a league of undercover agents committed to battling malevolence without charge. During the daylight hours, he would spy on mercenaries, halt bandits, and bring Thane Red Wizards to justice. Each night, he would return home to his wife Zia and their little girl Kira. Despite their lack of wealth, Zia was content, believing that Edgen was contributing to the betterment of the world. Tragedy struck when Edgen found Red Wizards fleeing from his home, only to discover Zia on her deathbed. With her remaining strength, she revealed that she had hidden Kira in the wall. This marked the end of Edgen's loyalty to his vow. Raising Kira alone proved challenging, and he often found solace in alcohol at the local tavern. It was there that he met Holga, exiled from her tribe for loving an outsider. She compassionately offered to assist Edgen with raising the child. Although they never entered a romantic relationship, they shared a bond of mutual respect. Struggling to survive, they turned to theft, initially targeting jewelry stores. Upon acquiring an invisibility necklace, they gave it to the now older Kira for her protection. She began accompanying them on their thefts, and they expanded their crew with individuals like Sorcerer Simon and Rogue Forge, allowing them to target more significant treasures. Their code remained clear, they never hurt anyone and only stole from the wealthy. Their trajectory altered when they encountered a wizard named Sophina, who sought their expertise to plunder Corin's keep, a fortress of the Harpers filled with treasure. Although initially resistant, Edgen was swayed when Forge informed him that the keep housed the Tablet of Reawakening, which could resurrect Zia. Recognizing the heightened risk, Edgen insisted Kira remain behind, neglecting to tell her about the Tablet lest the plan fail. Breaking into Corin's keep proved easy, and Sophina promptly seized a strange glowing horn. Edgen secured the tablet, but it activated a trap, summoning the guards. Sophina violated their code, incapacitating the guards with a spell that also trapped Holga and Edgen in time. Before fleeing, Edgen hurled the tablet to Forge, entrusting him with Kira's safety. As Edgen concludes his narrative, the last member of the council finally makes an entrance, revealed to be a creature with avian features. Without any hesitation, Edgen and Holga leap on the creature, using it to break through the window and glide to freedom with its wings, all the while ignoring the fact that the Council was prepared to grant their pardon. Once free, the pair head back to their home, which they discover has been vacant for some time. They retrieve Edgen's loot before heading to the tavern to devise a plan to locate Kira. A flyer leads them to the information that Forge has become the Lord of Neverwinter. Following an extensive course ride, they arrive in Neverwinter, where preparations for the annual Heisen Games are underway. At the Lord's Castle, they find Kira, who shows more enthusiasm for Holga than Edgen, believing her father had selfishly abandoned her. They then encounter Forge, who has used the wealth pilfered from Corin's keep to establish himself as the Lord of Neverwinter, with Safina as his advisor. Edgen learns that Forge has misled Kira about his arrest, and that wanted posters for them prove their escape was not lawful. Distraught by the deception, Kira flees the room, and Forge refuses to hand over Kira or the tablet. An attempt to assault Forge is thwarted when Sophina magically pins Edgen and Holba to the ground, revealing that she and Forge had conspired to betray the team during the last theft. Although Forge instructs the guards to imprison the two, Sophina secretly changes the command of execution. Edgen and Holga are led to an alley to be executed, but Holga uses a four tile to fend off the guards. 
Her barbarian prowess quickly renders the men unconscious, and she seizes an axe before fleeing with Edgen. Back at the castle, Forge convinces Kira that Edgen and Holga have abandoned her once more after securing the tablet. Shortly after, Edgen and Holga resolve to save Kira and retrieve the tablet from Forge, realizing they'll need a team for this. They start by seeking out Simon, who entertains crowds with comical magic tricks, secretly using them as a distraction to pilfer gold and trinkets. Upon recognizing his old friends, Simon's shock disrupts his spell, exposing the scheme. The infuriated audience lunges at Simon, who ineffectually attempts to fend them off with magic, sending them to the ceiling before inadvertently launching himself through a window. Fortunately, Holga is positioned outside to catch him. The trio escapes, and although Simon agrees to assist, he acknowledges that his magic alone will not suffice to thwart Sophina. They must enlist a druid, he advises, and he knows just the one. Subsequently, the three arrive just in time to witness a druid in imminent peril about to be killed. Abruptly, a horse goes into a frenzy and morphs into an owl bear, unveiled as Simon's friend. This creature rapidly defeats all the soldiers and rescues another girl, taking her ordinary form named Doric before fleeing on a genuine horse. Later on, the trio encounters Doric at her dwelling in the elven forest, where they discover that Doric distrusts humans due to her family abandoning her for being a tiefling. However, her animosity towards Forge, who has been ravaging the forest and slaughtering her kin, exceeds her mistrust, so she agrees to assist. In her private chamber, Sophena discloses that she is a wicked red wizard and converses with her master, the lich Sass Tam. He confides in her their grand scheme, for which she has been influencing Forge to resurrect the games. Subsequently, she accompanies Forge to meet with other lords to deliberate the arrangements for the Heisen games. Within the castle lies a vault containing the riches from the bets, safeguarded by an ancient seal that no one can penetrate. Suddenly, Sophina senses a presence and singles out a bug, revealing it to be Doric utilizing her shape-shifting skills to eavesdrop. Guards immediately pursue her, but she shifts into various animals to elude them. First a mouse that navigates the hallways, then a bird that escapes the castle, only to be struck by arrows and crash into a flag. She lands as a cat and morphs into a deer to speed away, successfully evading Sophina's onslaught. Doric later informs the group of Sophina's malevolence and the vault's seal. Simon acknowledges his inability to break the seal without the helmet of disjunction, believed to have been lost long ago. However, Holga recalls her people's battle against the cult of the dragon, suggesting they may know its whereabouts. Concurrently, Sophina engages an assassin to target the team and commands him to eliminate the guards who allowed Doric's escape. Eventually, the group pauses at Holga's former home for her to gather some belongings, including her walking stick. Holga is pained to see her ex-husband with another barbarian woman, but is comforted by his amicable demeanor and well wishes. That evening, the team reaches a graveyard filled with warriors who fell in the Evermore's ages past. Utilizing Simon's magic, they can momentarily reanimate the corpses for up to five questions. As they dig, each body imparts a fragment of a tale about the battle they perished in, continually pointing to someone else as the possessor of the helmet. After questioning numerous bodies, they finally ascertain that the helmet was transferred to Xenk from Thay, the homeland of the Red Wizards. Though Edgen is reluctant to trust the Thanes, who were responsible for Zia's death, the others share tales of Xenk's virtuous deeds as a paladin and persuade Edgen to seek his assistance. Several days later, the team encounters Senk in the midst of performing another heroic deed, employing his compassion to soothe a turbulent sea creature and save an infant that had been consumed by it. They arrange a meeting with him and disclose information about Sophina, prompting Senk to detail the entire chronicle of the Red Wizards. He reveals how Sastam utilized a stolen horn to orchestrate a blasphemous coup and unleash a spell that ensnared the souls of all who witnessed it, binding them to his command. With an undead legion, Shastam overran Thay. Senk theorizes that Sophina aims to assist in extending his dominion, as his powers currently cannot cross the borders. 
Seng consents to hand over the helmet only after Ejin pledges to allocate Forge's riches amongst the people of Neverwinter. Subsequently, the team journeys to the balls of the Underdark, where the coveted helmet is concealed. Traversing the forest, Sank recounts how he observed Sastam, sinister power corrupting virtuous individuals into wicked slaves. He elucidates that he barely escaped the Red Wizard's enchantment, leaving a scar on his forehead, and thus chose to utilize his abilities for good. Meanwhile, Sofina's covered assassin persists in tailing them. Arriving at a forested aperture, the team descends into the Underdark City, surrounded by Rockmans, which disregard them since they feast only on the intelligent. They must then navigate a chasm via a trap-laden dwarven bridge. Though Xenk knows how to evade the snares, Simon's inattention activates a trigger that collapses the bridge. As Holga rummages for rope, Simon discerns her walking stick, stolen from a wizard long ago, to be a hither-thither staff capable of opening portals across considerable distances. Utilizing this, they safely traverse the chasm and arrive at a statue that Senk manipulates to release the helmet. At this juncture, they find themselves besieged by Sofina's assassins. Senk's extraordinary prowess enables him to swiftly incapacitate the underlings before engaging the leader in a duel, pitting his luminescent sword against the foe's fiery blade. Though Zank prevails, the victory is futile. The undead Thanes persistently resurrect. Their escape route is then obstructed by a corpulent dragon that promptly devours the Thanes and wreaks havoc in its pursuit of the team. They must flee, evading tumbling rubble, until Simon opens a portal leading to a platform. However, the dragon's efforts to tilt the platform propel Engine towards its gaping maw. Fortuitously, Senk intervenes and thrusts his blade into the dragon's cranium. Alas, the dragon remains alive and resumes its pursuit, cornering them in a diminutive cave that begins to flood with saline water. This circumstance sparks an idea in Edgen. They submerge themselves, and he instructs Holga to taunt the dragon into discharging electricity. Simon then ignites a flame, triggering an explosion that demolishes the cave, enabling the team to flee by swimming. Once ashore, Sank takes his leave and heads home. Simon then tries to master the helmet, but is met with a spectral encounter with an ancestor who questions his ability and denies him attunement with the artifact. Despite persistent attempts, Simon faces rejection, dampening the group's spirits. As Simon and Doric express their desire to abandon the quest, Edgin discloses a personal story. He confesses that the Red Wizards executed his wife in retaliation for his theft after he grew weary of serving them without pay. He admits his failures but emphasizes his inability to surrender. Moved by his confession, the team renews their commitment. Holka subsequently devises an alternative plan involving the staff, rather than the helmet, to infiltrate the castle. They procure a framed painting concealing a portal behind the canvas, and Edgin positions himself under a pile of leaves to ambush a carriage transporting Forge's treasures, affixing the painting to it. Simon opens another portal nearby, and Holga manipulates the wood of the carriage through the painting, facilitating Dork's entry to retrieve the painting. A mishap almost causes a fall, but Dork's tail provides leverage, rescuing Simon. They restore the carriage and Doric camouflages the canvas before exiting in insect form. Later, the team arrives in Neverwinter for the inauguration of the Heisen Games, a perilous contest among five teams. Forge initiates the ceremony, enticing the crowd with a gift following the competition. The guards stow the painting with other valuables, but its accidental fall thwarts the team's plans. Doric begins carving an opening for an insect to enter as Edgen encourages Simon to attempt the helmet once more. Simon creates an illusory, singing Edgen to divert the guards, but his trapped foot causes the illusion to falter, prompting a chase. While Edgen and Simon make their way inside, Holga confronts the guards using her axe and any available objects, quickly incapacitating them. Simon arrives at the sealed entrance and dons the helmet, encountering his ancestor once again, who persists in disparaging him. On this occasion, Simon's fury is incited by something of greater urgency than his personal honor, leading him to physically strike his ancestor. 
This forceful act finally enables him to align with the helmet and gain access to the vault. Emboldened by his newfound self-assurance, he disables additional guards, and he and Holga proceed into the vault, only to discover it vacant. Concurrently, Doric, having transformed into a worm, creates an opening and finds the hidden treasure beneath the arena. She observes guards transporting it to a ship, exposing Forge's intention to abscond with all the gambling funds, oblivious to Sophina's true motives. A guard detects Doric and incapacitates her. Meanwhile, Simon and Holga are ensnared by magical appendages springing from the floor. Edgin, navigating the labyrinthine corridors, encounters Kira and offers a heartfelt apology for his failings as a father. However, this proves to be a deceptive illusion by Sophina, who captures him using similar tentacle magic. When Forge appears, determined to execute them, Edgin persuades him to grant them an honorable death by allowing them to partake in the games. Subsequently, the team is thrust into the Coliseum for the commencement of the games, their magical abilities inhibited by specially designed bracelets. They find themselves in a maze teeming with creatures, leading to chaotic chases. Illusions and treacherous tricks abound, including a dwarf trapped by deceptive imagery and Doric discovering a sword. Holka's leg is ensnared by a deceptive chest mimic, but Doric rescues her. Back in the maze, Doric's hand becomes trapped in a gelatinous cube, and she is freed with the aid of Holga, leaving the bracelet inside. Simultaneously, Edgen prepares to flee with Kira, leaving Sophina to oversee the proceedings. The team continues to evade monstrous threats and ultimately escapes the maze, only to be met with transport to the next perilous event. Edgen stresses the need to flee rather than continue, inspiring Doric. She orchestrates an escape by jumping into the gelatinous cube, which is then removed. Transforming into a snake, she leads them out, and they locate equipment and keys to liberate Simon from his magical restraints. Upon reaching the dock, they overpower the guards and locate the boat filled with treasures and the crucial tablet. The unexpected arrival of Forge and Kira leads to a confrontation in which the tablet's evidence persuades Kira of the truth. Her acceptance provokes Forge, who menacingly brandishes a knife to her throat, forcing the others to maintain their distance. As Forge indulges in a typical villainous soliloquy, Holga swiftly hurls a potato at him, striking his face and making him release Kira. The team, now with Kira on board, boards the boat to escape, with Simon conjuring a water spell that drenches Forge. A heartfelt moment follows as Kira and Edgen mend their relationship, Concurrently, Sophina, having manipulated Forge into hosting the games and keeping the audience for a gift, initiates her diabolical plan to form a massive undead army. Observing the ominous cloud amassing over the city, the teen resolves to intervene. As Sophina commences her enchantment over the gamblers, Edgen strategizes. Simon will conjure a portal connecting their ship to a vast balloon hovering above the Coliseum. Treasure pours through this portal, luring the attendees to chase after the floating riches, thus sparing them from Sophina's nefarious spell. After advising Kira to conceal herself using her necklace, the team confronts Sophina. She retaliates fiercely with flames, but Simon erects a protective barrier. When Doric morphs into an owl bear to tackle Sophina, she is repelled and summons a petrified dragon. The team's combined effort seemed futile against the stone behemoth. In the nick of time, Doric perceives that targeting Sophina will deactivate the dragon. The tide turns when Sophina entraps Holga and Edgen in an orb and raises a gargantuan hand to pursue Doric. A defiant Simon counters with his own magical hand. However, Sophina's prowess shatters Simon's defense and the orb. Refusing to admit defeat, the team unleashes an onslaught on Sophina, forcing her to deploy a time-halting spell. While she revolves in her perceived triumph, the team unexpectedly springs into action. They had anticipated this move. Sophina is aghast to discover that a concealed Kira has affixed a magic-suppressing bracelet on her. Transformed again into an owl bear, Doric assails Sophina until she succumbs. Amidst their celebratory mood, the team discovers Holga's critical injuries. As she breathes her last, a devastated Kira mourns her loss. 
Edgen discerns the maternal bond between them and employs the tablet to resurrect Holga. While the festivities continue, Forge's escape attempt with pilfered gold is thwarted by Xenk. Soon after, with Safina's magic dissipated, the city's original lord re-emerges, bestowing medals upon the saviors of Neverwinter. As Forge languishes in captivity, his pleas for leniency, rooted in a tragic past, fall on deaf ears with the council. In a desperate bid, he seeks escape via a bird creature. However, his attempt is foiled by the council's foresight in sealing all windows, leading Forge to conically collide with a solid wall. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.